Hey friends, this is another lo-fi let's play with me, Lee Alexander. It's a series where we visit vintage games and sometimes share our memories of those wonderful games that we had when we were kids. Today, let's go back to 1988 with the software toolworks Life and Death. This is a game about surgery. Uh, you learn to perform operations on patients in a hospital. And uh, let me tell you, during the stint of my life in, in about the third grade or whatever, when I played this game, I really wanted to become a doctor. And, and it was because of the knowledge that I learned in this game. Uh, so as all medical careers uh, start, we sign in at the hospital with the uh, receptionist. And uh, if I know one thing about performing operations, you do have to go to med school first. So we enter the building that says class in this hospital. And here's the chief teaching us um, important things about how to be a doctor. Uh, entering and exiting rooms by clicking, um, pressing the F1 key, uh, you can't request the help clipboard during surgery. Um, might might not establish the faith of the uh, attending uh, doctors. So now uh, we exit the classroom. Uh, you're welcome for attending, Chief. And we're going to start examining the patients that are here for us in this hospital. Um, I didn't actually realize how easy it was to become a doctor. I thought if you studied and practiced a lot, um, you could learn, you know, how to how to treat people. So. Here we have a patient. It is a it looks like a young woman. If we view her chart, she's a 32-year-old female, suffering from abdominal pain, accompanied by flu-like symptoms, nausea, generalized weakness, and dizziness. Now, if there's anything that it was useful for me to know as a third grader, it was what symptoms do do indicate serious illnesses and uh, which ones don't, because uh, I used to like to tell my teacher um, what symptoms I was experiencing when it was time to practice math, which I did not enjoy, um, learning to do uh, equations and, and things like that. Um, long division, actually, was what it was in third grade, and uh, often I would warn my teacher that I had a tendency to uh, have a infected peritoneum. My teacher, as you can imagine, took that very seriously. Um, and I would be able to list my symptoms. So now, as you, as you see, we, we touched the patient, we performed a palpation, and they had pain on, on two sides of their lower abdomen. We use this x-ray here, it's kind of fun to switch the machine on and off. She uh, clearly had a couple kidney stones over her pelvic bone. So in this case, I've learned that we refer her to a uh, uh, someone who does kidney stones. Let's see, um, a specialist. Um, so the chief congratulates us for handling that complaint correctly. Now the main objective here is to find someone that needs us to operate on them and uh, to remove their appendix. Uh, that's the first surgery that is available to do in this game. Um, after that you can practice on aortic aneurysms. Here's a person who, even though they're admitted to the hospital with various complaints and, and uh, things like that, they don't seem to have any actual pain. Um, Nonetheless, you have to be thorough. You can uh, be reprimanded by the chief for not doing a thorough enough examination. Similarly, if we decide to touch this particular patient uh, a lot, they complain and uh, they don't they don't believe that you're a real doctor. Um, I was offended by that when I was a kid uh, because I didn't understand uh, the implication. Of course, I'm a real doctor. I'm in third grade and I own four medical encyclopedia encyclopedia. Uh, so they had no. Uh, no pain anymore, so let's keep them for observation. Um, uh, congratulations, said the chief. The patient was suffering from intestinal gas. I see. So uh, if you have some pain and weakness but no soreness to the touch, you too uh, may be suffering from intestinal gas. So it is time now to encounter the copy protection on this game. There was a cardboard code wheel that um, looked like a, a, a beeper from the uh, from the original packaging. Uh, thanks, Dr. Chen. And uh, luckily, of course, now I have a text document to guide me toward the uh, right combinations that we need to choose uh, for each situation. Um, but yep, uh, you will only be allowed to perform operations in this game if you have the copy protection key. Ooh, this person appears to be in some pain. It's only on one side. Um, what side is your appendix on, friends? Do you know? I could never uh, remember which half of my body to clutch in pain when I was trying to inform my teacher that I was not in any condition to do my long division. This patient, you know, she 
Looks as if perhaps she's she's had some morphine already. Doesn't look so bad being in the hospital. Um, I kind of really wished that I would have my appendix out because I was so fascinated by surgical procedures. Uh, we can see uh, one kidney stone here on the side, so uh, looks like it's not time to operate, friends. Let's um, refer our 25-year-old female patient to a specialist. Uh, very nicely done, says the chief. I think, friends, we have a wonderful medical career together so far. We haven't even killed anybody. Um, here's a man. Let's see what his situation is. Uh, he's complaining about the pain everywhere. What does that mean, where every area is sore to the touch? Um, I'll just let you guys know because I'm eager to get us to the surgical procedure. Um, that's probably going to be a, uh, a situation where medicine is needed. And the chief says uh, we were correct, he had a bacterial infection. The funny thing about this game is that even though it begins with a medical school, it, you know, it doesn't really teach you uh, what symptoms mean what. You had to learn your way through this game, through trial and error. Um, every time you would make a mistake, even a lethal one, you would just need to go back to school and, and have the chief tell you what to do when you encountered the same circumstance next time. So. What you're seeing here, friends, this uh, medical expertise that I'm demonstrating for you, is the result of years of experience and memorization of this game. Um, aha, so we do have some uh, lower abdominal pain, but no kidney stones present. That means it's safe for us to assume that we can perform an operation. Friends, are you excited? We're going to go do some surgery. So we've ordered the operation, and uh, they're waiting for you in the OR, doctor. Sure, but before we do that, why don't we visit the staff room where uh, the beautiful uh, assistant nurse is going to help us choose the people that help us in our operation. So as you can see, there are many different, many different people here. Um, currently, we've chosen Lor Dr. Loralee Menzies. Uh, her area of expertise is vascular surgery, which is not uh, what we're going to be doing today. So uh, Dr. David Manglier is competent in general surgical practices. Um, Look, there's even some personal data on their dossier. Um, Mr. Manglier works well with Beverly Cabes, but an unsuccessful business deal with Kimberly Brewer has affected his ability to work with her. So apparently um, you'll get better medical advice uh, during, uh, during your surgical procedures. Um, administrative nurse Kimberly Brewer, I'll make sure we'll stick to policy. I I'd like to choose her, but uh, who, who does she work poorly with? If you, if you choose the right combination of staff in this game, you're going to get better advice at the surgical table than you might otherwise. Uh, she likes to work with Ken Shepard. So let's see what he's all about. He's a cardiologist. Wow, that's quite a mustache, Mr. Dr. Ken Shepard. Sorry, doctor. Uh, he will keep an eye on the patient's EKG. Uh, he'll inform the surgeon and recommend a course of action. Gets along well with Kimberly Brewer. I guess they like each other. So uh, yeah, let's, let's pair Ken Shepard and Kimberly Brewer for this operation. Uh, I'm excited about this, friends. Are you ready for the OR? Uh, we're told our patient is ready for surgery, so here is the OR. We're going to enter this room, and here comes our uh, our patient being wheeled by a doctor. And now look at this. Of course, so the first step we're going to take is to wash our hands with soap. Uh, we're going to put our gloves on. Those are very key um, hygienic procedures in surgery. Uh, that is something I can tell you from my years of preparation to be an intestinal surgeon uh, as conducted through this game, Life and Death. Um, you know, I, I didn't like the math at school. I was very passionate about medicine, though. I, I really did enjoy my full volume home medical encyclopedia that I think we got from some, you know, subscription deal that my grandparents um, had subscribed to on our behalf. We're going to inject the patient with antibiotics. I don't know why it starts with B, but that's another thing you learn through trial and error, and uh, we're going to put the anesthetic on, we're going to uh, prepare a blood transfus transfusion to see us through the first incision, and uh, I told my third grade teacher that um, I plan to become a doctor. Let's put the sterile drape on up here. Okay, uh, successfully draped the surgical site. And my third grade teacher discouraged me, um, letting me know that medical school in fact entailed a lot of math which was not a good subject for me. So we're going to make a diagonal straight incision. A little tough with my uh, mouse, but let's hope they don't mind that I did it a little bit crooked this time, friends. It's tough to do with a touchpad. Um, I really should be having a real 
mouse for you here today, but, you know, maybe it's fun if our hands are not that steady and, you know, perhaps we lose a few people along the way. This medical procedure is, is actually very demanding, and uh, it's essentially, uh, through trial and error, a repeated memorization of steps. Now that we have clamped the bleeders with the surgical clamps, we're going to apply our cauterizer to each wound site to uh, stop the bleeding from uh, expanding so that we can retract the skin layer. So yeah, upon hearing that uh, medical school would in fact uh, entail years and years within the academic institution, I did change my mind, to be honest, and uh, I wonder what would have happened if my teacher had encouraged me. Uh, here's the subcutaneous fat layer, friends. We again apply our scalpel very, uh, whoops, uh -huh, very carefully. If my teacher hadn't discouraged me, friends, I could be performing operations on you right now. Well, that incision is probably not going to be tidy enough. Um, I always uh, dread hearing my staff say that the chief is, is on his way during any of my operations. <gasps> oh no, we've used up all our forceps, haven't we? Um, uh, can we close the drape? No, we can't. Um, wow. That's, uh, let's, let's cauterize these three so that we can, uh, move the clamps onto, uh, some other, uh, ever-expanding wound sites. This is, uh, you know, a little bit of a jury-rigged surgical operation here. So, um, perhaps it's probably good that I, uh, did not then go on to medical school because, uh, I, I, my attention to detail is, is not any higher than, than my skills in math. Um, I'm sorry for handling the patient, I just, I need to place a clamp. Sorry. Um, so the blood is, is actually getting out of control right now as I complain here about, uh, you know, how my teacher did not show adequate respect for my professional ambitions as a physician. Uh-oh, we have another bleeder over here, friends. Um, in versions that I was accustomed to playing as a kid, uh, we've cauterized all the bleeders. Perhaps we should uh, actually remove and, and place the clamps back so that, uh, you know, we can use them on, on future situations. Okay, we have reached the uh, oblique muscle layer. Uh, I remember what that's called. Um, so yeah, this is actually just memorization, pattern recognition, and uh, a steady hand. And uh, these are apparently the main things that it takes to uh, successfully operate on people with appendicitis. I would boast to my fellow classmates that uh, if anyone did have a uh, an issue whereby they would need to be operated on in the classroom, I, I was prepared to do that. Um, we have retracted the oblique muscle layer successfully. Um, the layer that we're now looking at is uh, the transverse muscle layer. And, uh, spoiler alert, it uh, marbles in the opposite direction, and if I remember correctly. And if this version isn't too different than the one that I played on my Mac as a kid, that means we start the incision in this corner carefully, not jaggedly, I hope. There we go. And uh, now retract it. Aha! It's the peritoneum. I wonder if this is where we'll find the sample of infected fluid. Um, let's try it. Uh, surely you know you cannot take a fluid sample here. Of course. Uh-oh. Uh, bradycardia. Okay, cool. We, uh, upon uh, noticing the patient's heart rhythm plummeting, I acted fast, and I applied bradycardia. Um, now... If I remember correctly, we scrape the peritoneum at the corner with the scalpel, raise it with a forceps, uh, uh oh, ventricular lidocaine. Not now, Dr. Shepard, I'm trying to remember, uh, you scrape the peritoneum, you raise the peritoneum, and you nick it with the scissors. Uh, yep, let's see. Scraped. Uh, now we raise the peritoneum with the scissors and nick it with the scalpel. And I believe that should allow us to use the scissors to cut this delicate tissue layer that lies on top of the intestine. Let's hope we're right, friends. I think we 
may have made a little mistake here. Oh my goodness, we did it. And now what you can see here are the intestines. This is, this is the source of all the trouble. Friends, are you starting to get a little nervous? Because I am. Um, I think here is some place where we can take a sample of fluid. Um, and now we actually use this vacuum to uh, nicely try to suck away some of the fluid. And uh, I wonder if now we can uh, lift the intestines out of the incision. Oh, what bad luck, doctor. You made the incision in the wrong spot. Warning, the wound is in the wrong area. What does this mean? Oops. Um, let's see. Supposing we can, uh, bad luck. Okay, um, I'm not sure what this means. Perhaps we should, uh, perhaps you could actually help us, uh, here with this. Um, we have the blood up and going. Oh, man. So we can no longer, uh, we can no longer actually reach the intestine, friends. What do you like to do at times like this? I wonder if we can actually close the patient back up and, and start again. Seems very professional. Um, let's just close everything up. We should be actually suturing. Um, I'm going to use some skin clamps. Make the uh, make make this all go faster. In fact, you know the fastest way to uh, get the chief to come and rescue you from an operation is to do something wrong. Like I'm going to leave a heart on the surface of the skin. And uh, I'm sure this will certainly uh, yeah, infuriate the chief enough that he has interrupted our observation or our operation. And now we get to go to medical school and find out what we did wrong. Um, during your last operation, your imitation of Jack the Ripper did not amuse the staff. Uh, I'm sorry, I just I was hoping to get a little more help from my uh, you know, nurse and nursing assistants, but they're too busy having an affair or something. The bodily fluids around the intestines in an appendicitis case were infectious. Uh, yeah, I did, uh, I did use the suction hose. I did not make smooth enough incisions. I left instruments in the patient. And uh, I may pause the game by pressing the P key. Surgery is not easy, so don't lose heart. Try again. Yeah, you know, I think that uh, maybe if I had been encouraged more at a ch as a child, I might have believed that I had what it took to be a doctor, because if medicine, you know, requires any particular skill, it is a can-do attitude and a persistence uh, about all kinds of things, even if you're bad at mathematics and you don't like school. What do you say we leave the hospital for today, friends, and uh, come again next time to Lo-Fi Let's Plays. You can catch them on Offworld, uh, previously on Rock, Paper, Shotgun, or on my YouTube channel, uh, if you just Google the Alexander YouTube Probably I'll be there. You might find some uh, people making YouTubes about uh, ethics or something. But uh, as I've demonstrated here, I am completely ethical, qualified to be a doctor, and, uh, and, and good at handling medical equipment. So if anything ever goes wrong in your life and you'd like me to remove your appendix, uh, you can reach me at Lee Alexander on Twitter or at Lee at Offworld.com. Thank you so much for your time, friends. I'll speak to you soon.